welcome back to Ashton Gate. It feels so good saying that with fans here. Another opportunity, and it's onside, and it's two for Bristol City, and this time, and it's in. An early goal for Bristol City, and Andy Vyman is back. And it goes clear, ahead of Bristol City, and they are level. It's a first goal for Andy King for his boyhood club. Well, good afternoon and welcome to Robins TV for our coverage of Bristol City's trip up north to take on Preston North End in the Sky Bet Championship. We'll be there every step of the way, of course, and we welcome our viewers on YouTube and Facebook until kickoff. Of course, after kickoff, uh, you'll need to be an international viewer. We welcome you too because of those EFL blackout rules. Now, after a narrow defeat to Luton Town on Tuesday night, Nigel Pearson's men are looking for that bounce back ability. And joining me in the hot seat today is former City defender Chris Honour to discuss that. Chris, welcome back. Thank you very much. Lovely to have you. Um, so let's talk about that uh, performance from, from Tuesday night then. Uh, a really positive performance, but but still a, a way to go. I thought they were excellent. For 40 minutes, I thought they did everything but score. And then, unfortunately, after that, we conceded the goal. And then we've got a few defensive frailties that hopefully the manager has addressed with one of his signings um, in the last few days. Um, but, yeah, we just look a, look a little bit like we've got a soft centre in defence. And uh, But apart from that, I thought we were excellent. I thought it was a great game. I thought we played some lovely football, some good passes between the lines. Um, and it was really exciting to watch. And it was I was really... You know, surprised we didn't, you know, walk away with at least a point. Um, there was a, a miss right at the end, and Naki Wells could have possibly done a little bit better. But um, I thought on the night, I think we definitely deserved the point, if not three. Curtis in the week said we didn't really get what we deserved. So you'd echo those thoughts? Oh, absolutely. No, I thoroughly enjoyed the game, um, and I and I was actually really pleased with the progress I thought the side were making. You know, we've we've all seen. Um, uh, some tough times here over the last year or so, um, but I've now seen you know the progress with the young lads coming into the team. You know the Alex Scotts, the Masengos, uh, the Cameron Prings, um, all making a difference in the team. And I think um, we're all moving in the right direction, and uh, a few results in our favour. And hopefully um, we can start going up the league and looking forward to better things ahead. Okay, the boys are just arriving. Here, there's the there's the gaffer, of course. There he is, the new boy, uh, Tim Closer. Uh, we'll talk more about him on the way very shortly indeed. It seems to be that it's, it's that final third that seems to be the, the Achilles heel at the minute. It is. It's the two, is, you know, it's the two most important ends of the pitch, isn't it? At the moment, we're, we've got that little soft centre in front of our own goal and we need to be a little bit more clinical in front of um, um, the opposition's goal and take the chances once we're on top. Um, we did everything so well, uh, uh, you know, midweek. Um, all but score when we were on top and um, we need to just be a little bit more ruthless, put the ball in the back of the net, um, take the opportunities when they arise um, because the ch we all know what the championship's like. <laughs> um, all the teams are so even that if you don't take your chances, it comes back and bites you where it hurts and um, you must take those chances. OK, let's hope we take those chances today. More that's, from Chris on that, the way uh, a little bit feel. later. <laughs> Thanks, mate. The more from Chris a little bit later on. First of all, let's take a look at that all-important team news. The man, as ever, in the know is Toby Osborne. Thank you very much, uh, Downsy. Yes, yeah, starting with uh, Ryan Lowe's uh, Lily Whites for this afternoon. One change for them. Ched Evans drops down to the bench. His performance was described as colossal against West Brom, but is replaced by new signing and Villa Loney Cameron Archer. He scored 12 minutes into his Preston debut. Preston operator back five and wide on the left. You'll notice former Bristol City man Greg Cunningham comes into the 11 starts uh, today, having re-signed for the club last summer the side is captained again by Alan Brown who age 26 has already over 300 appearances for the club and then up top top scorer Emil Rees who is as uh, many as Andy Vyman so far this season partners Archer and then former Manchester City man Scott Sinclair joins Ched Evans on the bench as for Nigel Pearson, one change for Bristol City again today too. He isn't wasting any time in introducing his new signing, Tim Closer. He replaces Zach Viner. He'll join that back five with 
De Silva, Callas, Pring and O'Dowd. And Masengo and Scott keep their positions in midfield. And rightly so, 38 years between them, but holding their own in the middle of the park. Strike, strike trio, Vyman, Semenyo and Martin keep their spots too. And some excellent news from the bench. Robbie Cundy comes into the matchday squad for the first time. He completed 90 minutes against Charlton for the under-23s on Tuesday and looks to be ready to make his mark. Wells came close to grabbing a late equaliser on Tuesday. Can he find the score sheet today if given the opportunity? Still just one goal so far this season, but chances, of course, have been at a premium. Right, so let's hear from the man that picked the side today. It's Nigel Pearson. Nigel, an, an immediate call-up for Tim Closer. Talk us through your selection. Well, I, I think it's a game where we need... Um, the ability to deal with aerial balls better than we did the other night. Uh, yeah, it's um, it's uh, it's something which we've thought quite a lot about to make sure that we get the decision right. But I think his organisation skills and his experience will will be um, very important for us today. And also Robbie Cundy on the bench, which is great for him. Tim hasn't played for a while, but is he looking fit? Is he? He's got a lot of experience. Yeah, I mean, look, it's. I think what you've got to factor in is that he's a he's a player with a lot of experience. Um, he's understands the game very very well. I think we we at times have lacked experience within the team. So yeah, and he's playing in a three. It's not as if he's playing in a two. So I think that will be um, he will benefit us and. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him out there, yeah. Robbie Cundy, he's waited a long time. It's been a tough journey for him. Yeah. Wonderful to see him in that match day squad. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> he's, his grin's huge, let's put it like that. He's, he's had a difficult time. Um, he's been at the club for about two and a half years now. Uh, so for, for him to be involved in a match day squad, I think, will be a big day for him. And I've said to him, look, I've got no worries about throwing him on if needs be. They are a physical side and we've got to be uh, we've got to be competitive and got to be able to deal with that and I thought uh, that was the only part of the game the other the other night that was a little bit uh, found wanting at times because you know um, Thomas and, uh, and, and Chrissy had too much to do at times. Um, we need to have a collective uh, mentality of, of keeping the ball out of the net and, and like I say Tim Tim brings experience and uh, hopefully the players around him will benefit from that. Is that the big thing today? You're scoring goals, but really you want to be a bit more tight defensively. Well, yeah, I mean, look, if you cast your mind back to the start of the season or the early part of the season where I think we were all wondering where the goals were going to come from, and I think now there's only about six or seven sides have scored more than us. Um, but, of course, we, we haven't got it right at both ends of the pitch, and that's, that's a, a frustration. Um, but we'll continue to work at that. Uh, the players are honest, they're, they're, they're doing everything that they can, but at times we've just not uh, worked hard enough or um, shown the nous to keep the ball out of the net. So, uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> I'm not saying it again, but we are working at it. Nigel Pearson chatting to Dave Barton uh, next to the Deepdale shower curtain by the looks of it. Very odd place to do an interview. Um, uh, just, the, just the one change, not, not particularly unexpected that Tim goes straight into the side. Yeah, it just gives you um, a little bit of experience as, um, as the manager was saying. Um, it must break his heart because he's a, a solid centre half himself. You know, that was how he built his career. Um, and for us to concede goals the way we have, um, I can imagine it gives him a few sleepless nights and um, he wants that addressed. And, bringing Tim closer straight into the team um, I think is a straightforward decision for him. Um, he wants some more physicality, some more experience and um, yeah, I think um, we'll see how he goes today and hopefully he does very well. Joe Williams also a fan favourite. Do we get to see some more minutes from him today, do you think? I think he's going to, he, well, he looked excellent when he came on as a sub. Some of his passing, his range of passing from deep midfield was, was excellent again at Toulousan uh, midweek. Um, yeah, I'd like to see him a, a little bit more, but obviously he can't throw him in straight away. We're all just a, a little bit wary of his hamstring injuries. Um, we don't want any more repeat of those. And um, just to edge him in slightly and slowly, give him more minutes each week, and hopefully um, he'll be up and running really strong by the end of the season. 
and Andy Vyman, obviously now, you know, we're seeing his engines fire up. Also, um, I don't know about for you, but for me, Antoine Semenyo seems to just have this added air of confidence at the moment. So hopefully more from those two today. Well, he's growing in every game. I mean, Semenyo is absolutely flying. I, you know, he, he's so unpredictable. Um, Centre-halves back off. They give him a lot more space because he's got a, a little bit of turn of, turn of pace. He's, he's strong. He can hold players off. And as we can, have we seen over the last few games, he can bring players into the game. Um, he, he set up Martin on Saturday. He, again, he set, off, he set a few passes and movements in um, into play um, with Vyman. Um, his all-round game's excellent. Um, he just needs to do the easy stuff, maybe, um, and bring the ball and suck the ball in and play the simple passes. But he's so unpredictable and so skillful that he's given um, some opposition defenders a, a real nightmare. Can I, I do this with the kids on match day, right, out in the stadium? Can I push you for a score prediction today, Chris? Um, I would take uh, a win at this stage, obviously. Um, <laughs> let's see how the game unfolds. But yeah, a cheeky 2-1 away win would be absolutely excellent. OK, we'll reassess at half-time, OK? Yeah, brilliant. Nice. Now, as we've been talking about the arrival of Tim Closer, the Swiss international, has uh, been the talk of the town. So now, in a Robins TV exclusive, let's get up close, sir, and personal with Tim himself. Tim, welcome to Bristol City Football Club. This move signals a start of a new chapter in your playing career. How much are you looking forward to getting started? Well, very much, obviously. Um, uh, I had, uh, yeah, I had the, uh, the chance to, to move on from Norwich and uh, after my loan deal ended with FC Basel, I went back to Norwich and then we had the talk, obviously didn't work out, so we um, well, canceled the contract. And then, um, unfortunately, I couldn't find another club for, for the last month. Um, but yeah, that's football sometimes. I was trying to stay fit. I was training with, uh, with, with the FC Basel just to make sure that I'm fit and ready if there is a chance somewhere. And, and now I'm very happy that Bristol is giving me that chance. Yeah. And you've been here for a couple of days training with the squad. Uh, what was it about Bristol City that made this move right for you? Well, I knew Bristol before because I've... Uh, played here several times and, and I knew it, um, it's always a hard place to go and play um, against Bristol because they, they have a good squad, they have a good mentality, it's always like you have to really dig in uh, to get something out of here and uh, yeah the lads they accepted me very well uh, I think you know with the training facilities obviously uh, that's new and, and modern um, that helped me uh, as well just to get a good look at everything and, and it was obviously the, the talks with Nigel um, or Mr. Pierce <laughs> were fantastic um, although I started to talk with everyone a little bit just to get a bigger picture of everything and um, yeah I, I, I wouldn't say I fell in love with it but you know you can you can sense there is something going on and, and that's why I, I thought it's the right decision yeah. You arrive here in the West Country with 100 games under your belt in the Championship, having played with Norwich, so you're accustomed to the league, aren't you? Uh, yes, I would say so, yeah. Um, I, my first year, I remember my first year, actually, uh, which uh, was a hard one because I, uh, I've never played in the second division in the UK before, so I had no idea what was coming and it was, uh, it was quite hard to adapt to it because uh, it's a different um, pace, I would say. Um, it's very physical and you know you need to know what's what's coming and uh, I fell in love afterwards with the championship because I just think it's it's a brilliant league and uh, you have a yeah, you have a lot of games obviously you don't train that much <laughs> but um, yeah I mean the championship is very competitive and and I really I really love to play in this league yeah with Norwich Right, can't wait to see him out on the pitch a little bit later on. Right, still to come then, we talk to City Academy protege Tommy Conway in our quick fire questions. Plus, we head off in the Robins TV TARDIS back to 2011 for a wonderful victory at Deepdale. Plus, for our overseas viewers, all the action, of course, from kickoff at three o'clock. All still to come after this short break.
Welcome back to Robins TV for our coverage of Bristol City's away trip to detail. Taking on Preston North End, former City defender Chris Honour is my guest today. Chris, um, as we know, Preston, a sort of mixed match of a season so far, although uh, they, uh, they, they were victorious in the week. So confidence is going to be high for them. What sort of game are you expecting today? Well, I think uh, Nigel Pearson uh, uh, mentioned it in his interview that they're quite physical but they can also play football. They're quite direct. Um, they're not afraid to throw the ball into the box when need be um, and let the forwards and defenders scrap it out. Um, and they can play when need be as well. So it's going to be an interesting game. I think Bristol City have to concentrate on their own performance as well. And if they can play anything like they did first half at Luton, mm. they've got an excellent chance. Beating West Brom, of course, like high flyers West Brom is, is an achievement. So that is going to boost morale. Well, how does City match that? Well, I think they're going to be full of confidence after that, obviously, that victory. But, um, you know, the Championship is, is a crazy league. Everyone can beat anyone. Uh, West Brom are going through a little bit of a lull in form anyway. So, it, it, although it looks great, it wasn't that, you know, it's not that unexpected because, as we said, anyone can beat anyone. But, uh, yeah, Bristol City have to apply themselves really thoroughly away at North End. It's not a great place to... I mean, it's, there's usually a nice little atmosphere, it's a little bit sparky, but you've really got to make sure you put the work in, put the effort in um, and, and, and keep the crowd nice and quiet because they do get, the locals get behind their team. Um, and if you, uh, if you allow them to start and shouting and screaming at their team and uh, getting, you know, right be behind them, you're going to find it a really tough afternoon. Chris, thanks very much for now. Uh, now, Tommy Conway is the focus of our attention now. He has been playing football with a Bristol City crest on his chest since the age of eight years old. And it's about time we found out more about the academy striker who's bro broken through and now making regular first team appearances. We sent Robins TV reporter Dan White up to the HPC to find out more about him. Tommy Conway, 19, striker. Instagram or TikTok? Instagram. Long range screamer or a last minute winner? Last minute winner. Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Hot weather or cold weather? Hot weather. Your dream holiday destination? Maldives. Eat in or eat out? Eat out. Nike or Adidas? Nike. Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. What is your dream car? Range Rover. Nice. Easy tap-in or worldly assist? Easy tap-in. The Premier League or the World Cup? Premier League. Invisibility or super strength? Invisibility. The celebrity you'd most like to meet? Uh, Harry Kane. You a morning person or an evening person? Morning person. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Cardio or weights? Cardio. French or Spanish? French. Your favourite player growing up? Aguero. Pasta or pizza? Pasta. An easy one to finish, Tommy. How many teams in Bristol? One. Bristol City. <laughs> what a guy, what a guy. Um, an impressive chap. Yeah, fantastic answers as well. I like the last one. <laughs> <laughs> he was very confident about dogs rather than cats. He though, was, yeah. Well, no, yeah. You must threaten him with cats or something. He, he certainly doesn't like them. A few, few of them must have uh, scratched him a few times. <laughs> I was just looking at some of his stats. Nine goals in 13 appearances when he was on loan over at Bath. He's obviously got that hunger, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, it's lovely to see a 19-year-old enjoying his football by the sounds of it, it's lovely, you know, and he's a, obviously a Bristol City fan, he's been here since he was eight, um, and, he, and he knows where the goal is, so yeah, hopefully he's another one who's going to be um, getting in the first team on a regular basis, there's, there's, there's quite a, a, it's so nice to see the Alex Scotts, the M uh, Masengos, um, you know, Cameron Pring, uh, Zach Viner, Max O'Leary, it's all coming through at the moment, and um, it's really exciting times, I, I love watching it, and uh, I'm sure lots of other Bristolians feel the same. Six first team appearances for him so far. How difficult is it to make that transition? I mean, not just on the pitch, but also off the pitch, because all of a sudden you're thrust into that first team environment. It's a massive thing, you know, really, especially as a young lad, all of a sudden people are talking to you who've never spoke to you before. Um, uh, off the pitch, it's really quite difficult. Uh, I just hope 
that there's such a nice group of young lads coming through that they all keep each other grounded um, because the hardest thing is in such a big city as Bristol, everyone wants a little bit, a bit of you. And, um, you know, it's very important that, you know, they just concentrate on their football and uh, let their feet do the talking. Nice. And uh, I, I think that it's, it's just nice to see the young lads. I mean, I personally feel very proud of some of them and uh, want them to do very well. And when they make the odd mistake on a Saturday, you know, you feel it a little bit more than if it was just, you know, the merry-go-round of players that come into the club. When they're a local lad, you feel it a little bit more. Good stuff. All right. Thanks very much, Chris. Uh, now, what were you doing on the 5th of February 2011? I know what Bristol City were doing. They were beating Preston North End 4-0. Let's have a look. have got Preston pegged back for a second here Pittman on the run from the McAllister cross first time to Clarkson headers it downwards and into the back of the net and Bristol City have that second goal and lead 2-0 Preston North End have had their chances they haven't taken them and Brett Pittman hooked the ball back in after a good vision from Jamie McAllister and David Clarkson who's had a very good game you'd have to say headed the ball down past Lonergan into the corner of the net Sure what the Adam Barton was doing, but David James has tried to find Andy Keogh. Wayne Brown is under pressure. Keogh is away. Keogh's been brought down. Play on, says the referee. It's going to fall to Clarkson. 3 0. Absolutely wonderful for Bristol City on the break. David James sent it long while people were complaining about the foul at the other end. Andy Keogh beat Wayne Brown. Wayne Brown brought him down. The referee was going to give a free kick. He played the advantage wonderfully well. Keogh looked inside, took the shot on. Lonergan deflected it only into the path of Clarkson, who rolled it into an empty net to give Bristol City a 3-0 lead. Great ball to Wolford. It's two against two for a second with Pittman overlapping. Three against two now, Bristol City. If Wolford goes either side, he comes to Pittman. That's a wonderful ball. Pittman's for 4-0. Pittman for 4-0. Wonderful finish. And Bristol City have put the icing on the cake. Great break by Bristol City. Well found by Martin Wolford, who had a choice of either side. New Pittman was skipping up alongside him. Played a perfectly weighted pass in front of the Bournemouth man, former Bournemouth man. And he drilled it past Lonergan for 4-0. Love that kit, by the way. Hopefully some more goals just like that today. Well, it's time to say goodbye to our viewers on Facebook and YouTube. Unfortunately, due to the EFL restrictions, we can't show you the game, but you can follow all of the club reaction, of course, on our social channels or a Robins TV audio pass, which you can get at bcfc.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next Saturday for our trip away to Blackpool.